Let's talk prices. I go online, everybody says, how much is this? Or how much is my bike worth? Or, or that's too much, or, that guy's crazy. Or, or you know, it's, uh, I get it. Everybody wants to know what the bike's worth, and, and, and I do too. And the, your bike is only worth what someone else is willing to give you for it. Bottom line, it don't matter anything else. It doesn't matter how rare it is. It doesn't matter how what condition it is. It doesn't matter if it runs or it doesn't run. The value of any product is in the eye of the purchaser. You have two different camps. The buyer's camp wants to get it as cheap as possible. The seller's camp wants to get as much money as possible so you can turn around and buy another one. And somewhere between those two camps is a, is a, a happy medium. It's, it's a price that the buyer is, will, is willing to accept and the seller's willing to pay. It doesn't matter if it's three wheelers, it doesn't matter if it's cars, motorcycles, houses, boats, guns, whatever it is. That's the bottom line when it comes to negotiating. There's two different sides to every situation. With three wheelers especially, they're hot right now. They're real popular. People are buying them up and they're paying a lot for them. Now there's some bikes out there that are showroom mint, Barrett Jackson, if you will, quality. These bikes have were purchased, they're, they've been in crates, they sit in museums, and they've never been ridden. And those bikes are worth a lot of money. But it still comes down to someone's got to want them enough to pay a lot of money for them. I don't have a lot of money, so they're not worth a lot of money to me. Maybe they are to you. Now, that said, they're only brand new once, and there's bikes out there that are sold in brand new condition, yet they're 35 years old. And that's great. If, if I had one, I'd, I'd put it, you know, hanging on the wall and, uh, and look at it every day. And maybe I'd build a room right around that bike. But people are off, often, you know, curious about what their bikes are worth. And, and so I kind of have a, a way of going about it. And it's just for me. It works for me. It might not work for you. A lot of this is regional. I see out in California that the bikes don't bring as much money out there. But, uh, you know, in the Midwest, it's kind of middle of the road. Up north and in the deep south, uh, they're pulling a lot of money down there. Um, online auctions have, have opened things up to a world market. It used to, Craigslist was the only thing you had, and so everything was kept regional. You didn't really see bikes for sale across the globe like you do today. With, with Marketplace, you can, you can look at a bike and, uh, you know, it could be across the state, across the world from where you live. So you have to factor in that not only is, is you know, location difference, but you're gonna have to factor in the cost of going and getting it or, or shipping it, you know, if you were the seller. So prices, depends on where you're standing and that's not a cop out. I'm gonna tell you what I think they're worth, but that's just my opinion. It's a starting price point or a window, if you will. Um, big Reds, the 85, 86, and 87 Big Reds. The 87 was the most uh, sought after because they made the fewest of them. 85 was the most made, so therefore they're the least sought after. So then you start thinking about condition. Um, how does it run? How does it sound? How much wears on it? What's been replaced? Are the parts that's been replaced? Are they Honda parts? Are they aftermarket parts? Is it a collectible, as in is it brand new mint? Or is it just a bike that you're going to ride around the yard and you're going to get scratched up? That's what this is. This is a rider here behind me. That's how I classify the bike. The bike runs and drives. It's got new tires on it, new brakes. It's going to put a new clutch in it. All the maintenance items are going to be taken care of. Therefore, I feel that it has a higher value than a bike that's been sitting neglected for 30 years. I think that stands to reason that a bike that's inoperable, of course, is going to be less than a bike that's operable. And then a bike that has been reconditioned, which is what I'm doing to, with them mostly, is going to be worth more than it's just a, you know running. It doesn't have an oil change at eight dollars a quart, and it doesn't have tires on it at a hundred dollars a piece. And you know these things add up. So keeping that in mind, if you take just this bike, there's probably four different price points that this bike could fall into. If it was mint, you're probably going to get six, seven, eight thousand dollars for it. If it's been sitting out in the yard for 30 years, you might get a hundred bucks for it. I mean, really that's, you know, if it's missing fenders on three flat tires and the motor's locked up, yeah, 
it's worth a couple hundred dollars. That's it. Because it's going to take thousands of dollars to get it back to where it really you know, could be or should be. The 250 ES class in my area run around $2,000. That's about what you could spend on a good bike. You can spend more than that. You can spend less than that. But that's a starting price point. Um, you take one in good running condition. It's had some, you know, it, it's been maintenance and serviced and it's got new tires on it. And it's ready to ride. You know, you could spend $4,000 on that bike. Keep in mind, go buy a four-wheeler. You priced a four wheeler lately? Six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars for a four wheeler. You can go look at one of those side by sides. I looked at one the other day. It's eighteen thousand dollars. I paid that much for a truck with four doors and air conditioning, but to each his own. If you like side by sides, that's maybe a great deal. More power to you. Uh, it's just not my cup of tea. Not my thing. They're cool. Don't get me wrong. They are really cool. But uh, I'm just not into side-by-sides yet. So yet preference that. I'll need a bigger shock though if I start working on side-by-sides. Three-wheelers are smaller so I can, they don't take up as much space. So $2,000 should net you a really good three-wheeler. 250 class, a 200X. Um, those, that, that's a good buy-in. You start looking at a 200S, you look at a 185S, you're looking probably to spend somewhere around $1,500, maybe a thousand. You know, they're just made tons of them. They're, they're not that special. They, they don't have a lot of options. They don't have reverse. They don't have electric start. They don't have a new battery. You know, they don't have batteries in them. Um, condition, condition comes down to everything. It's the same for cars or houses or anything. Everybody wants to feel good about their purchase. They go on the internet. How much is my bike worth? Here's a picture. And they're hoping that everybody tells them more than what they paid for it. And then you got guys that, you know, pay nothing for these bikes. They pick them up for a hundred dollars or 200. They're in the right place at the right time. Um, they're wanting everybody to go, Oh, that bike's worth two grand. Well, uh -huh. they, they set, they set everybody up so they could come back and say, well, I only paid 50 bucks for it. And great. You did a great, you know, you got a great deal. Uh, outstanding. When you sell that bike one day, you'll, you'll make lots of money. But those deals don't come around all the time. Uh, they're few and far between. So realistically, we talked about prices. This bike in particular, the 250 Big Red, this is what the one everybody wants. It's, it's the big, big red. Um, if you talk value, fenders, seats, and tank, is where all your money's at. I tell people that and they think I'm crazy. It's true. So NOS fenders, let's just look at eBay. Um, sorry, not NOS. Original fenders in used condition on eBay will set you back $350. A seat, reupholstered or in good, you know, not tore up seat will set you back 250. And a nice tank that's not rotted out and rusted out will set you back up to $500. And none of that is in perfect box condition. That's just in really, really nice condition in three components of the bike. We haven't talked about if it's running or if it got tires on or if the headlight works or anything like that. That's the bulk of your money. So if you spent two grand on a bike, you only paid about 500 bucks for everything underneath the tank, which is really the most important parts. If you think about it, uh, it's the part to get you home. So if you're looking at bikes and you want to assess the value, look at the condition of the fenders, look at the condition of the seat, look at the condition of the tank. There's a lot of guys out there that are cutting these bikes up and they sell off those top three parts, maybe a few other small things, rims or front suspension or something, and they're done and they crush the rest of it because they're in and out quick. It's not, that's, not the, that's not what I do. I, I try to save them all. Um, but there's still a market for that. If those guys weren't out there selling those fenders, I wouldn't have a fenders to put on here to save this bike. If they didn't sell that tank, I wouldn't have a nice OE tank to put on this bike to save it. But I had a 200 not too long ago that came in, really, really nice bike, no seat. What are you gonna do? I can't make a seat for a 200. So I get online and I find a seat. The guy was willing to sell me a seat at a reasonable price. 
got the seater, recovered it. That made that bike rideable. Can't ride it without a seat. I wasn't going to put a cushion on it, you know, from a couch. So there's one part of me that doesn't like parting bikes out. There's another part of me that can't do what I'm doing if guys didn't park bikes out. So again, like any business, there's something in between. I try to save them all, but I know I can't. And there's guys that want to cut up perfectly brand new, you know, perfectly good operating bikes. Somewhere in the middle is kind of where we, where we, you know, we find ourselves. There's bikes that can't be saved. Um, I brought in that 84 the other day. I assessed it in an earlier video and I told you why I couldn't save it. It wasn't cost effective to save that bike. That bike in very good condition is $1,500 bike. I can't put two grand in it and turn around and, and have value in, in the bike. It's just, it doesn't work that way. So sometimes that bike would have been a great candidate to part out, which is what I'm doing. The difference is I'm not selling the parts. I'm using the parts, the fenders, the seats, the tires, the tank of that particular bike is going to save another bike that needed nicer fender seat and tires. Um, it's gonna make that bike a whole lot nicer than what it ever could have been had I not took those parts off that bike. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny, it, it's just the way it is. You know, people are people, I'm the same way. When I get a good deal, I wanna talk about it, and I wanna share it, and, uh, and when I don't get a good deal, I don't wanna talk about it, and I don't wanna share it. But that's, that's just the world we live in, and that's people being people. And, and don't get your nose uh, bent out of shape if somebody asks a whole lot of money for something. Don't buy it. Simple as that. If you don't think that bike's worth five grand, then go find another one. It's, it's, it's not your bike, you know? And, and if you're selling something and you want to put a price on it, and you saw another one that was comparable to yours, you thought, and, you know, you set your price accordingly, up or down, whatever. It's your bike. You put a million dollars on it if you want. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Put the price on it. Put it out there. The market will correct it. Nobody will call you. Nobody will send you an email wanting to buy that bike. And if they do, you might not want to read it. And then you're going to get tired of waiting because you've decided to sell the bike. So what do you do? Well, you start lowering the price and you keep lowering that price and lowering that price until somebody that comes along and wants to buy it. That's the market correcting your price. And we all deal with that. If you put a price out there that's too high, nobody's gonna call you. I promise you, you put a price on there that's too low and they will blow your phone up. Um, you won't be able to answer the calls so fast. There was a, a, a post I saw the other day, a guy was selling a, a three-wheeler and, and he felt that it was a good price. That's all that matters. He was happy, that's the bottom line. He was happy with that price. He had 235 messages in the first hour. So what does that tell you? Somebody got a really good deal. He undervalued what he could have asked for it, but he was still happy with the price he put on it. So he shouldn't be upset. He put the price out there. <clears throat> he, was, he was willing to let it go for that. He didn't know the market. So we're gonna do a video in the future about buying and selling. And I kind of rambled on about that uh, in this video. But uh, and, and I, got a few, I got a few tips. And so I'll, I'll share this with you in another video. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when it comes to buying and selling and you know, marketplace and Craigslist and uh, I don't know all the other ones. There's a, said, uh, I can't think of the name of that other one. It's terrible in my area though. I don't even look at it. That's saying something if I ain't looking at it. Uh, what's the name of that one? I deleted it from my phone, it was so bad. There was like cats and coloring books and Furniture and stuff. I, I don't. I, I don't know. It's uh, oh, let it go. Yeah, I, I let that app go. I, I didn't need it. It wasn't any good. Now that's in my area. Maybe in your area is is is, is brand new sliced bread. I don't know. But uh, in my area, it was trash. So I didn't use it. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the channel. Uh, I hope you. Uh, I hope you like it.
That's the bottom line. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's been fun for me, and uh, I hope to continue on. And as long as y'all are subscribing and hitting the like button, I'm going to keep doing it. Let's save them all.